Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. The White House is evidently in a tough spot thanks to a scandal trifecta. Benghazi, the Justice Department seizing AP phone records, and the IRS targeting Tea Party groups. The release of some Benghazi-related emails seems to show that that story is even less of a scandal than it appeared to be. The Justice Department's investigation of AP is profoundly distressing and disturbing. But this IRS story seems like it could have some legs, so let's take a closer look. The scope of the story, according to the media, is pretty clear. As this USA Today headline puts it, a Democratic administration is favoring liberals while targeting conservative groups. Now, a story on the USA Today website included one progressive group, Roots Action, co-founded by FAIR founder Jeff Cohen, describing the IRS hurdles his organization faced. That fact undermines the headline, and oddly enough, it doesn't appear in the print edition of the paper. Now, a lot is still not known about what was happening at the IRS, but there are still some questions that we can raise. As Brad Friedman notes, according to the IRS's own investigation, the conservative groups that were flagged for additional scrutiny made up about one-third of the groups overall. What were those other groups? We just don't know. Former New York Times reporter David K. Johnston on Democracy Now! noted that none of these groups were actually denied tax-exempt status. One group lost their tax exemption in this period, but it was a liberal outfit. And if dragging out the tax-exempt application process is a scandal, Ryan Chittam of CJR reminds us that many media outlets applying for nonprofit status have been stymied in that. But to the DC press corps, blood is in the water, and things can be treated as full-blown scandals well ahead of the facts. Well, with all of this swirling around the administration, MSNBC host Chris Matthews and liberal pundit Jonathan Alter decided that Barack Obama needs to assert himself and take control. Their model for this, Ronald Reagan's busting of a union. I think actions speak louder than words, and I gotta tell you something, when Reagan broke the Patco strike and fired them off for breaking their oaths, everybody right. in the world, Should including the people in Moscow, got the word. It's one of the reasons Head we ended the Cold War, because they know we had a strong president. Yep. Talking ain't gonna do it. Now that wasn't Chris Matthews' only reference to Ronald Reagan that night. I could, I'll go back to Reagan and the Patco strike. I can go through all the history of Iran-Contra. Reagan didn't put that behind him until Nancy, his wife, got him to admit he did do it. He did trade arms for hostages. And until he did that, it wasn't over with. It's hard to imagine anyone would praise Ronald Reagan's handling of Iran-Contra. But the message here is certainly a curious one. Praise for a right-wing icon's union busting on the so-called liberal cable channel. And finally, a memorial for journalists who died while reporting the news wouldn't seem to be the kind of thing that would attract controversy. But that's exactly what's been happening with an exhibit at the Museum in Washington, D.C. The problem, as reported by Ma Michael Calderon in the Huffington Post, was the inclusion of two Palestinian journalists, Hussam Salama and Mahmoud al kumi They were cameramen killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza last year. The problem is that the two men worked for Al-Aqsa TV, which is run by the militant group Hamas. Calderon reported that conservative media outlets and a pro-Israel think tank had been pressuring the museum to drop the two from their list, and the museum refused at least for two days or so. By May 13th, the museum caved, deciding not to name the pair in its memorial. This recalled a similar controversy in 1999, when NATO bombed an office of radio television Serbia in Belgrade. Sixteen journalists were killed. The Press Freedom Group Committee to Protect Journalists criticized the attack, but the following year, CPJ decided to remove the 16 journalists from their memorial list. Making decisions about which dead journalists you count as journalists, based on political judgments about their employers, about who killed them, and about which powerful forces are complaining, undermines the very principle of press freedom. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.